Welcome back to Surfline's ongoing coverage of Hurricane Florence. I'm Surfline Director of Forecasting, Mark Willis, alongside me. As always, we've got lead forecaster, Kurt Corte here. Florence made landfall around Wrightsville Beach, North Carolina, just a few hours ago at 7.35 a.m., but obviously that does not mean the threats are over. Extensive storm surge, rainfall, and wind impacts continue. There's also still a tornado threat. We've got a couple of active tornado warnings right now as we're recording this. And this is gonna be our last surf conditions check as it relates to Hurricane Florence and our coverage. But again, our friends and colleagues uh, just down the road to our south still have a long, long way to go. They definitely do. Some um, crazy video and, and footage uh, coming out of uh, southeastern North Carolina uh, today and even down south of us towards Buxton um, and Hatter's Village and stuff. Some some uh, some crazy impacts there. Um, a friend of mine actually sent me a photo. Uh, you know, a tree uh, fell down on his house um, uh, last night. And uh, so, yeah, pretty crazy. We we dodged a bullet up here, but um, definitely uh, some pretty significant impacts down towards the Wrightsville area. That's right. And of course, access to the Outer Banks still closed right now. And it looks like that's going to start to reopen tomorrow on Saturday for residents and then visitors on Sunday, but still no word on when they're going to let people back on Hatteras Island. Let's take a look at the surf conditions and start from Florida and work away north like we've been doing the last several days. And we're starting at Fort Pierce where the surf looks pretty fun this morning, Kurt. It definitely does. Um, I've, I've surfed Fort Pierce a handful of times in my life and um, you know, obviously as the swell direction has changed, initially it was more of an east to east, southeast and Fort Pierce is right kind of on the border there of, uh, of, you know, blockage by the Bahamas. That's one of the reasons why we break up our regions the way we do. Uh, Central Florida includes all the way down through Fort Pierce and then south of there you get into the Treasure Coast and uh, our Palm Beach region. Um, but fun waves, a little bit of a crowd, but I've seen a couple people get a couple head dips there. And uh, winds are still looking pretty favorable here as we head towards midday and some fun waves, but the buoys are on their way down there. Uh, have you taken a look at uh, the observations from the Fort Pierce, Fort Pierce buoy? Uh, I did, Kurt, and I saw that. Actually, I've got it up uh, right here. Um, let, me, let me pull it up here. Uh, yeah, 4114, 41114, the Fort Pierce buoy coming in around uh, three and a half feet at 10 to 11 seconds out of the northeast. <clears throat> so down a little bit, yeah, from what it was earlier. So, I um, mean, that's that's the trend that um, that Katie has in the forecast as well. Uh, you know, dropping northeast swell, you can see the swell direction has actually shifted more towards the northeast. Um, you know, in response to to Florence's path there, but uh, down a little bit. So, you know, if you're listening now, I would I would try to get out there and get in the water um, because the swell will be dropping now that Florence has moved inland. So, still some occasional waste to occasional chest high waves there once you get up a little bit further north it's still a little bigger throughout central florida and we're looking at new smyrna now in volusia county where the surf looks really good again and you know it's probably been one of the standouts along the entire east coast for the last week they've had a lot of waves in new smyrna yes they have and gosh it's just a fun looking wave isn't it um the way it comes in and you know your bathymetry just offshore i think we did a spot check uh, several years ago mike watson did an analysis of some of the bathymetry and some of the uh, the features that are out there that really break up this swell and make it you know that peaky fun um, beach break kind of wave that it is and i know um, i think i saw some footage of the geiselmans down there uh, getting some good surf and man, yes, it looks a lot better than what we have outside of the office right now. Yes, it does. Shoulder to occasional head high sets, maybe even a little bit bigger on the takeoff and winds light offshore to light and variable. Um, it changes significantly, especially when you compare it to yesterday as you move into the southeastern United States. We're looking at Folly Beach Pier now, and it's dropped off significantly. And you look at the buoys offshore here, the, um, the Edisto buoy, and the frying pan shoals buoy, all that stuff's going out to sea now, of course. Uh, you've got a west component on those buoys that are moving away from the region because they're on the south side of Hurricane Florence. Yes, that's right. And, um, you know, as the storm has moved uh, closer to southeast North Carolina and now has made landfall, that swell direction, like just like we, what we saw down in Florida, has shifted more out of the northeast. And really, South Carolina doesn't do very well with that um, because of the way the coastline faces. So, Pretty significant drop off in wave size um, as you head south of Cape Fear with those offshore winds, Myrtle Beach, uh, Folly Beach, and everywhere in between, definitely dropping off. Um, obviously, uh, some of our cams in southeastern North Carolina are down due to some of the impacts from Florence. 
Uh, obviously, if the power internet goes out, we don't have a live streaming cam anymore. Um, but you know, from the observations that I've heard and my friends that are texting me, uh, pretty solid surf up into, uh, especially the Crystal Coast, uh, Onslow County, um, and pretty significant storm impacts as well. Yeah, but the winds there are, are pretty much on southeast on shore, so it's unfavorable north of the storm. And there's a lot of people worried about their homes. Uh, we both have been in contact with friends and colleagues down there that have pretty serious impacts. So we're thinking about you guys down there in southeastern North Carolina. On the Outer Banks at S turns, also it's uh, you know not a dire situation. We've had worse uh, conditions throughout Hatteras Village, but it's uh, there's definitely some impacts down there as well. And overwash is, is uh, you know, we're approaching high tide right now, and there's probably places that are still seeing overwash, and we're looking at S-turns now. Th- by the way, Kurt, thanks for moving the cam to look at Highway 12 yesterday because it looks like there's a lot of sand on the road and also a lot of water on the road down there. Yes, um, we are able to uh, remotely change some of the presets here, and uh, I did uh, show kind of that S-turn stretch there um, just north of where our cam is located and a little bit of ocean overwash going on there. Of course, they uh, actually have started building the new, uh, some of the preliminary stuff to build the new new bridge that's going to bypass that whole area, the whole uh, jug handle deal that they got going on there. But definitely some impacts. Um, and uh, even further south, I saw Brett, Brett Barley uh, posted some stuff with some ocean overwash uh, there in the Frisco Hatters Village kind of area. Um, so not as bad as it could have been for us up here, but you know we're just so fragile and uh, it doesn't take much for, for the ocean to, to wash over the road. And of course the surf's still well overhead on sets and blown out with strong onshore winds. And that's you know pretty much the case as you work your way up through the Mid-Atlantic region. There's plenty of waves, just unfavorable conditions. The first sign of better conditions except for a couple of the little uh, novelty waves up and down the East Coast, um, which we don't need to talk about. Um, <clears throat> is once you, get to, <laughs> <laughs> once you get to uh, Long Island, they had some fun waves this morning, not as good as yesterday, and the winds have definitely picked up more out of the easterly direction, so it's kind of sideshore now. Yeah, so it was a little bit of a tough forecast uh, looking here is, is whether the wind was going to be northeast or east-northeast even. Um, and, you know, that can have significant impacts for western Long Island and, and uh, definitely eastern Long Island. Um, you know, they definitely handle that northeast wind a little bit better than they do uh, as it trends more easterly. So fun waves there, definitely more manageable than what we're seeing here or up in the mid-Atlantic. And plenty of people out, you know, we're taking a look at the cams there. Uh, some fun waves, higher tide, uh, you know, later this morning. So a little soft for some breaks, but, uh, you know, you really can't argue with rideable waves and, and manageable conditions. And it looks like it's gotten progressively worse over the last few hours, but like you said, still some rideable waves. Uh, kind of another one of the standouts over the last couple of days is Rhode Island. We're looking at Matunic now, and uh, surf still looks generally chest to head high, probably some overhead sets. Uh, winds aren't quite as good as they were earlier this morning, but still plenty of fun waves here as well. Yeah, similar situation there with the winds trending more side to onshore, uh, depending on your location, but lots of fun south southeast swell from hurricane florence still filtering in i expect this to uh really start to fade later today but then especially as we head over the weekend now that florence has moved on shore uh still going to be um some uh, winds over the western atlantic due to the large circulation of florence um, but in general we're looking at a fading trend as we head over the next couple of days and when you get into New England, there's still waves up there as well. The buoy, the Jeffrey's Ledge buoy, show, still showing about a four-foot swell at 12 seconds out of the east-southeast. And we're looking at York Beach, Maine now, and the surf, uh, the report that Rob Metzcypher put up this morning, waist to chest high. Uh, they, this area gets really drained out on the lower tide, but they should see some improvement over the next few hours as that tide comes back in, although it looks like there's pockets of fog again, which has been kind of a, a trend the last several days as well. Yes, uh, very large tides up there in the Gulf of Maine uh, and that can significantly impact uh, the quality of the surf. But um, yeah, fun waves, you know, a little bit of southeast swell um, filtering in, waist to chest high zone or so. Uh, New Hampshire a little more shadowed by that, so uh, a little bit smaller than what we're seeing up in Maine. But fun waves, all things considered. 
So that about does it with our coverage of Hurricane Florence. It looks like the surf and swell from Florence is going to continue to ease to the weekend. But Kurt, why don't you kind of close things out with maybe a little update uh, with the forecast at a very high level for the East Coast, because there's obviously a lot of stuff going on in the Atlantic, but it's not that close. Um, but what do you, what do you see in there um, in general? Gosh, it's been a very active week. We have uh, Joyce, Helene, and Isaac out there, um, you know, not even to mention Florence. But all the systems, Isaac now moving through the, the Caribbean, uh, Joyce and Helene pretty far out there. So that's going to really limit the amount of surf we're going to see from those systems. So really for most of the East Coast, Florence, or what's left of it, interacting with high pressure over northeastern Canada, really going to continue to be the primary swell producer for breaks especially from the southeast up into the northern half of the east coast. Um, we will see a little bit of a swell pulse from, from Joyce and Helene and also Isaac from when it was uh, you know, east of the islands. Um, but overall, uh, a trend down for many locations. Winds in general uh, gradually improving for many locations as we head over the next couple of days, especially in the next week. And uh, there's going to end up being a frontal system that takes what's left of Florence, and that's going to impact our surf for the northeast uh, towards the middle part of next week. So thanks for that update, Kurt, and thanks for all the hard work this week. I know you've been working um, very long hours, as we all have during this situation, so we appreciate it. And you can get all the details in Kurt's forecast and our entire team's forecast by utilizing the regional forecast links throughout the site and also the premium analysis that we do uh, twice a day, 365 days a year. And once again, I'm Surfline Director of Forecasting, Mark Willis, with lead forecaster Kurt Corte from our office on the Outer Banks. And last, uh, just again, we are thinking of everyone in southeastern North Carolina and the parts of South Carolina that continue to be pummeled by Hurricane Florence.